Every year, millions of people around the world fly on commercial airlines. It's such a common event, we hardly give it a second thought. But have you ever wondered when and where it all began? This is where. This is the basin on the south side of the approach to the Municipal Pier in downtown St. Petersburg, Florida. It looks like a construction site, because it is. The city is in the midst of a multi-million dollar project to rebuild its pier. The when was precisely 10 a.m. on Thursday, January 1st, 1914. The pier looked like this then. On that New Year's Day morning, 3,000 residents, nearly half the town, came out to witness something truly historic. They came to see a 25-year-old pilot named Tony Habersack Janis from Washington, D.C., and the former St. Petersburg mayor, Abram File, climb into a flying boat built by Tom Benoit from St. Louis, Missouri. The moment they took off, Janus became the world's first commercial airline pilot. Mayor File became the world's first airline passenger. And the St. Petersburg Tampa Airboat Company became the world's first regularly scheduled commercial passenger airline. Their flight is recognized in a special display in the gallery on the third floor of Tampa's International Airport. Of course, they weren't the first to fly. That honor belongs to the Wright brothers, who made the first powered flight in Kitty Hawk, North Carolina on December 17, 1903, 11 years earlier. But up until New Year's Day, 1914, there had never been a regularly scheduled commercial airline passenger service. The Clearwater St. Petersburg International Airport also recognizes the first flight. A full-sized replica of the Benoit proudly hangs over the baggage claim area. The idea to start an airline came from an engineer in Jacksonville, Florida named Percival Flanzer. He read an article written by Benoit talking about the economic viability of scheduled passenger service. He contacted Benoit with a business proposition. Together, they created the world's first passenger airline and decided the perfect place to try out their idea was Tampa Bay on Florida's Gulf Coast. St. Petersburg is on a peninsula. In 1914, there was no easy way to get to the other side of the bay, just 20 miles away as the crow flies. It was two or three hours by boat, five or six hours by train, and because the roads were largely unpaved, automobiles could take a full day if you were lucky. What Flanzer and Benoit promised was a 23-minute flight. They formed the St. Petersburg Tampa Airboat Company, offering two regularly scheduled round-trip flights each day except Sundays. To build interest, they held an auction for the honor of becoming the world's first airline passenger. Mayor File won with a bid of $400, about $10,000 in today's money. The first flight was on time for departure, but developed engine trouble in mid-flight. Janice was forced to land in the bay to reinstall the propeller chain that had slipped off. A few minutes later, they were back in the air. They were greeted in Tampa by a crowd of around 3,000 lining the banks of the Hillsborough River near the bay shore. Today, it's called Janus Park. You'll find a simple monument there, somewhat ironically, an airplane propeller. The next day, May Peabody of Dubuque, Iowa became the first woman airline passenger. She paid the standard airline ticket of $5. The St. Petersburg Tampa Airboat Company only lasted three months. It came to an end when the 90-day contract with the city was up. It had sold out all of its reserve seats quickly, but more importantly, it proved that regularly scheduled commercial airline passenger service was not only possible, but that it could be done safely, reliably, and profitably. Tony Janis left Benoit to work for the Curtis Airplane Company. Sadly, he was killed training Russian pilots in a crash in the Black Sea on October 12, 1916. 
His contribution to commercial aviation is remembered each year by the Tony Janus Distinguished Aviation Society, which presents an award in his name to someone who made a significant contribution to commercial aviation. In 2018, the award was presented to Captain Chesley Sully Sullenberger, the commercial airline pilot who saved the lives of all 155 aboard his plane when he was forced to make an emergency landing in New York's East River. A not-for-profit organization is planning to erect a monument commemorating the first commercial flight near the spot where Janus took off. They're hoping to build the monument, which will include a likeness of the plane, in what will be called the Benoit Plaza. It's scheduled to be completed by the time the new city pier opens in 2019. Could Percy Flanzer have imagined all that has happened since 1914? Yes. He once said that what was impossible yesterday is an accomplishment of today, while tomorrow heralds the unbelievable.